So this is video number two on my Synology Wi-Fi mesh network setup. Now in the previous video, I went over the three devices that will be setting up on this Wi-Fi mesh network. The first one is the Synology RT2600, and that will be our primary router. This router is a B-side, 512 megabytes of DDR3. It has four by four omnidirectional antennas, 2.4 gigahertz as well as five gigahertz, uh, four network ports in the back, one WAN network, and you do have an option to set up an alternative WAN on the port number one. We also unbox two of the MR2200. These are the mesh network routers. They are tri-band routers. So what that means is that one five gigahertz network is dedicated to connecting to the RT2600, which is the main router. And then you still have the 2.4 is five gigahertz for you to connect to. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is go over the software. This is the bread and butter of Synology guys. No one in the business does it better. The SRM or Synology Router Manager is the easiest interface for you guys that are probably not so tech savvy. Setup is easy navigation and everything that you need to do we will cover in this video so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into it So another big shout out to everyone that subscribed to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting that red subscribe button in the top right and also hit that notification bell. That way when a new video is released, you won't miss a thing. And last but not least, if you guys want to support the channel, please, easiest way to support this channel is to smash that thumbs up at the bottom right of this video. So I'm not going to keep you much longer. Let's go ahead and jump into the overview of Synology Router Manager or SRM. So first we're going to start out with the RT2600 AC and once you have it hooked up on your network, you're going to go to find.synology.com and what it's doing now is just scanning your network, see what Synology devices are on your network and it should heal the results. Once it finds this router, you'll see that it's in a state that's not configured and it will give you the option to go ahead and configure it. So you can see right there, it did find my NAS, which is my DS918 Plus. Check out the review on the top right right now, but if you click to the right, there it is right there. So it gives you the model, the IP address, as well as the MAC address, telling you that it's ready. So let's go ahead and connect. You are now accessing Synology router with the WAN port. Please enter a pin code on the bottom shell of your Synology router to start the setup. So let me go ahead and check the bottom of my router. So username is set to admin by default. So I recommend go ahead and change that as soon as possible. All right, so congratulations, you're Router setup is now complete. So launch the router. So after three or four updates, we're back in SRM or Synology Router Management. So I'm gonna do a quick overview, show you guys what this involves. I'm very excited about this part because I feel like this is probably the best part of the Synology ecosystem. So let's start in the top right. We do have a search right here. We do have the options. So if you click on that, you can see the account that you're logged into. Click on options there. We can change your password. You can change the desktop view, email account that's associated. Let's click out. You also have the option to reboot and log out. This is your notification, so system events. Here are a couple updates that were pushed, and uh, local network is showing me that there's an error um, because there's an overlap. And the reason this is happening is because I have two DHCP servers on here. So that's something I'll figure out a little bit later. Click on here, this is your main menu. So when you install new applications, this is where it'll go. Just like in the NAS system, you can install new apps. You have safe access, you have a security advisor, support center. Uh, SRM help and control panel and you can go ahead and just drag and drop to your desktop so if I wanted to drag the save access and there we go so let me move this up top and let's go through some of the application I want to start at the bottom and get into the meats of it which is at the network center so of course SRM help right here you do have a package center package center a package center allows you to install applications on your router so let's see what's available so here you can see that we have safe access that's installed already we also have the VPN plus server we have a download station, threat prevention. We also have a DNS server, cloud station, media server, radio server. So a lot of cool options on this router. And uh, some of the, the actual packages do overlap. So if you already have your NAS, for instance, you do have some of these packages already. So safe access is something that I want to do a separate video on. This application is awesome, and I'll probably touch on it a little bit, but it allows you to set schedules as well as allowance for certain devices. For instance, if you have kids that you only want to be on between 6 and 10 a.m. or something like that, or 8 and 10 p.m., you can go ahead and just set that time frame. And with this, you can also block their device completely from accessing the internet during a restricted time. So like I said, stand by, another video coming up on that, because I believe this is a very useful tool and how Synology breaks it down is very easy to understand and easy to set up. Let's get out of here. That was our packet center. Next, we have our control panel. 
All right, so here's a user. From here, you can add or remove users. So if you want someone else to be able to access this interface, you can go ahead and do that. If you click to advance, you do have other options, more options for your password. You have a two-step verification that you can set up. Pretty cool. You can join a domain. So from here, you can set up an LDAP client. Now, LDAP for short is Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And basically, it's just an internet protocol that email and other programs use to look up information from a server. Next, we have our storage. And you can see right there, no storage device available. But remember, if you have anything hooked up in a USB drive, you will have additional options here. You have your file service. So you can enable Windows file service, Mac file service, if you guys are using it for that. You have services. Pretty cool. Enable SSH. And if you click on or just hover over the little eye, it will give you some more information. Same thing with SNMP. NTP. So basically allow network devices to synchronize time with this Synology router. So a lot of cool options on here. A lot of the stuff uh, we're not going to play with today, but it's good to know that these options are available. Notifications. The notifications will alert you if something's going on with your system. So if you have a critical alert, maybe an intrusion attempt or something like that, uh, this gives you the option to either push email, you can do SMS, you can do mobile devices on browsers, and you have additional options to get the notification out to you. Now, if you click on device here, we'll give you the serial number, the model, CPU, as well as the CPU rate, cores, total memory. This is the version of SRM that we're actually running right now. This is the one we just updated to, guys. So version is 1.2-7742. And this is update one, and this is current as of now. You have your uptime, server address, as well as time zone. Now, to the right. This is your LED guys. So all LEDs are on right now. If you click here, only status LEDs are on. So click apply. And basically all the LEDs just turn off except for the first one, which is status. You can also customize LEDs guys. So for instance, if you guys have uh, this router in a room or a guest room that you want the LEDs to go off at nighttime, you can go ahead and set up times for it to go off. So pretty cool options. So let me go ahead and turn it on right now. Turn it back on. All right, so you do have a printer. You can add a network printer here. You have a reboot schedule. So uh, this is essentially a computer. So every computer needs to be rebooted every once in a while. So maybe every week or something like that. Just schedule a time, maybe 3 a.m. in the morning, just for it to reboot, just for everything to come back online. On the system, you can see it's checking for updates automatically. And you can see it says your SRM version is up to date. Further down, you have the option to back up your configuration. Uh, just in case something happens, you can go and back it up. And below that, you do have the option to go ahead and restore your configuration from your backup. To the right, restore factory settings. Basically, wipe your router, put it back in a factory state. So you have a system database here, SRM settings. So it gives you some of the ports, regional options, give you a time zone, notification language, login style. So gives you an option what your login page will look like. So want to look like this or this, and you can go ahead and play with the color as well as the alignment. Synology account, if you do have an account, you can go ahead and link it. You can see mine's linked right here. When you start acquiring Synology device, this is a great option um, just to have all your devices under one account. All right, let's get out of here. So this is our control panel. Let's go ahead and leave. Next, we have our Wi-Fi connect. So this is all about your Wi-Fi. Let me just drag this up. So the status right now, system's healthy. So right now the router, um, both channels are up and running. Uh, five gigahertz as well as 2.4. You can add a Wi-Fi point. So uh, this is uh, another option to do if you guys are setting up the mesh network, which I will be doing in the next video. Uh, Wi-Fi connected device. So um, nothing connected right now. And let me go on and I'll go ahead and connect my phone right now. See if it updates in real time. So just connected my phone and we'll see what happens. You can see right here, transmission and receiving that just um, spiked. And you can see Wi-Fi connected device just went to one. And you do have the option right here to turn your Wi-Fi uh, signal off. You have your guest network. Those are disabled by default. But if you guys want to set up something for your guests to jump on without giving out your password, you do have that option. Down to wireless. So Smart Connect allows the router to decide which band is better for your device. So right now, switching between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. But if you guys want to dedicate um, each band, all you have to do is turn this guy off. And you can see right here, you now have your 
Synology 5 gigahertz, you have your Synology 2.4, and now you'll see both networks uh, separately. So if you have it turned on, you'll just see one and it will have the name right here, Synology Router. But if you have it turned off, you will see the 2.4 as well as the 5 gigahertz. So it all depends how you want it configured. Let me go ahead and switch this on because I know I'll be using both networks uh, in different manners. So I'm going to click apply here. And there we go. So we do have WPS or Wi-Fi protected setup. Basically, it's just a button in the back of your router that you can just press. If your device does have that option available, uh, just press it on here. It allows you to quick connect. It's not the most secure way, but uh, some people like it. I don't really use it that much. And you can also enable WPS mode from this interface. So if you click right here, it goes into that mode, WPS mode uh, within two minutes. So it gives you two minutes to um, activate WPS on your device and connect to it. Like I said, I don't use it, but a lot of people find this easy to use um, to connect to their network. So Wi-Fi point basically allows you to add more Wi-Fi points to your networking system. You have your guest network. Like I said, mine's off right now, but can't turn it on. 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz. Now on the top of this, you do have the option to set up schedules as well. And you can go ahead and set up your landing page for your guests as well. So you can set up the page where your guests, when they connect, they'll be redirected and then they're prompt to Give whatever information, maybe you want an email from them or a phone number, whatever you decide, and then they'll be authenticated to jump on the network. So pretty cool. We have our Mac filtering. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, basically you're allowing or denying devices from getting on your network. So you can see right here, the policy is deny Mac addresses in this list. So all you have to do is just hit create description. This is my phone right here that I have. I can just click on it. It gives you the Mac address I can create. And basically that will just deny my phone from, from being on this network. So I'm not going to do this obviously, but can do that. Just a blacklist or whitelist devices from being in your network. You can do the opposite as well. So instead of denying Mac addresses on this list, you can allow only Mac addresses on this list. So click here. If I only wanted my phone to be on this network, I do have that option as well. So that was basically it for the Wi-Fi area. And now we're getting into the meat of it, guys. So this is the network center. Let's click on that. And here we are. So you can see. So this is my IPv4 settings. So this is my internet connection right here. So IP address, my gateway, DNS server. Over here is my 5 gigahertz as well as my 2.4 gigahertz. Now below that, you can see you do have the upload as well as the download. And on this list, if you click on device list, this is the only device connected right now is my phone over to CPU. This is my CPU usage as well as my memory usage. Go to internet. So from here you have a couple options. You have a connection type. Set to auto right now. Set as default gateway so you can enable that or you can disable. Right now set as the default gateway. You have ISP settings so if you guys want to go in there and play with that you can go ahead and do that. Um, ISP settings for IPTV as well as voice over IP. You have VLAN settings, IPv6 setup, so a lot of different options. This is more for your advanced users. Obviously, you can enable a secondary interface. You can also manually configure your DNS server. Right now, your default DNS server is your router, so 192.168.1.1. And the reason this is shown this IP address is because I do have another router on right now, um, my Netgear, which is that IP address. So I can go ahead and change that if I wanted to, but now I'm just going to leave it as is. My smart WAN. We talked about this a little bit during the unboxing, but we do have two ports that's capable of connecting to your internet or your WAN. So if you hit the drop down right here, you see the two options, the failover, basically if one goes down, the other one will kick in, or you can go to load balancing where you can dedicate certain um, amount of traffic to a certain port. So pretty cool options here. We have your quick connect and DDNS. This basically allows you to connect to your interface from um, other places besides your home. So that's something I'll probably configure a little bit later. And last but not least, you have your 3G and 4G, and you can use the USB port and a dongle to get uh, 3G and 4G capabilities. You do have port forwarding, guys, and if, if you've done anything network related, maybe it's remote desktop or um, certain things you can do with VPN or uh, just logging into your network from anywhere, you do have to forward or open certain ports just so you can have that availability. So you also have port triggering, which is similar to port forwarding. The difference there is that the port triggering, that port is not open permanently. It's only open when the host machine triggers that port. So you do have the option to set up a DMZ, and this is uh, in layman's putting 
uh, services out of your your network or making them accessible out of your network without passing your firewall that way the bad stuff doesn't get inside of your network if that makes sense you do have the local network here all right so general ip address dhcp server you have ipv6 which is not enabled here you can set static routes uh, basically uh, gives devices on your network the same IP address every time this is very useful for NAS you don't want it uh, your IP address changing you might have issues connecting to it same thing for network printers and stuff like that you don't want to have that IP address change because that means that you probably won't be able to connect to it right away you have a DHCP client so this is what's actually connected to your network via DHCP DHCP reservation, so nothing reserved as of yet. You also have your IPTV and voice over IP configuration. So you can dedicate ports to um, IPTV or your voice over IP. Next you have traffic control, and this is basically a service running, and what this does is just manages your upload and download traffic running on your network. You do have advanced here, you do have monitor, you do have reports. So once you do set that up, you do have the option to view those other areas. You have security. Under security on the general, you do have the option to set your browser to automatically log out of this interface. So right now set to 15 minutes. Uh, you can enhance your browser uh, capabilities by skipping IP, check in and prove protection against cross-site forgery attacks. A lot of different options here. You have the denial of service protection. So basically um, just helps prevent malicious attacks over the internet. Firewalls uh, enabled by default, but you can go into your settings and kind of play with um, what you want to do. So definitely recommend just leaving this as is unless you, you're an advanced user and, and know more about the system on the services. So these are all the services right now. I can go through enable, disable. So you have FTP, FTPS. Um, scroll down, you do have Mac file services, Bonjour, SSH. So do have the option here to kind of um, enable or disable services um, based on your discretion. You have auto block, so this options um, block IP addresses with too many failed attempts, including login via SSH, FTP, WDEV. So basically, if something tries to um, get onto your system or into your network and has too many failed attempts this device will be blocked so pretty cool options right now you can enable auto block um, you can set the amount of attempts so right now set to 10 you can set it to 5 um, within certain amount of minutes two minutes whatever you, your discretion is and down to operation modes so operation modes basically um, is how you're planning to use this router. So right now it's used as a wireless router. So it's coming directly from your ISP or internet service provider into your router and it says as a primary DNS server. So dishes out IP addresses within your network. Now you can use this as an access point. That'll mean that you run in this router from a different device. So maybe you have a switch or another router that you're running this from. You can go ahead and plug this in and uh, set it up as an access point. It will just um, hand off traffic from one area to another essentially it becomes part of the existing network wireless repeater is kind of the same thing the difference is that the repeater is a wireless connection to another wireless connection so you connect to your other router via wireless and then this kind of boosts the signal uh, to get it further so if you guys have a bigger house or a small business that, that needs that extended range maybe this is an option for you so that's basically it for the overview of this interface and this router like i said the safe access is uh we're going to get into that in a separate video very powerful tool allows you to set permissions and uh, do different things especially if you have kids at home you want to give them time limits or you want to restrict sites or restrict videos or any or keywords you do have a powerful tool here that gives you that option so that's it for this video the next video i will be going over the configuration of the synology mesh wi-fi router this is the mr2200 ac and um have two of them put in different locations of my house and I just want to show you how to set it up on the existing system to get better Wi-Fi coverage. So if you guys have any questions about anything in this video, please let me know. I will be leaving links to this router as well as the two mesh routers in the description. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.